All right, it is uh, just a tad after 10 o'clock. Uh, I want to go ahead and... Nine. Uh, at 9 o'clock, I'm sorry, thank you. Uh, bear with me, I'm not feeling real great this morning, but uh, hopefully we're nearing the end of this. I think I have budget allergies or something. So, um, Thank you all for being here. We're going to go ahead and get started. We do have a couple of folks we're going to hear from this morning. And, and I'll, I noticed when I came in, Mr. DuBose was here first, so I'll go ahead, if it's all right with the board and Mike, we'll go ahead and let him present. He's here to uh, present the Arts Council. And he did send out, I think I've seen an email and a presentation, but I, do you have hard copies of that, I do, Mike? Okay. for the commissioners anyway. <clears throat> I think I haven't used this for this right button will it advance me. Right. Okay. And left will go back and then the middle is a is a pointer if you need to okay. point something out on the screen there. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Mike DuBose. I'm the president of the Arts Council. Um, and I'm here today to speak to you in support of our special budget appropriation request for six thousand um, dollars. I'd like to start with <laughs> advancing the slide. Uh, uh, with uh, stating our mission. You know, our mission is to enrich the lives of residents and visitors to Allegheny County through, the ex through exposure to high quality and diverse art, music, and other cultural experiences. Um, some ar arts arg organizations exist primarily to improve the skills and opportunities of its members, uh, or perhaps a, a segment of the, of the, of the population. Uh, you might refer to these as arts education uh, organizations. Um, I believe this, uh, you have decided, at least preliminary, preliminarily, to fund one of those such organizations that exist in the county. And I'm very pleased to hear that you are doing that. They do a great job. Uh, but I wanted to emphasize that our mission is broader. Our mission is focused on not a group of artists, it's focused on the public. It is our role, as we see it, to improve opportunities for art, opportunities for education within our community, to make the quality of life for our residents better, to make our town and county more attractive to visitors, more attractive to people who want to come here and live. So that's our role. I think it's, it's consistent with Mike's uh, message or comment in his budget uh, package that budget appropriation should serve bu public purposes. I think our mission is a public one. And um, we embrace that role of being an organization that is, in, that is enhancing art appreciation, enhancing opportunities for the public to, to be entertained, to be educated, uh, and, and to improve their lives. Let's look at what we've done this year uh, in advancing our mission. These are our primary programs for the year. The first is the Blue Ridge Read. Blue Ridge Read is a community read. That's the way it's generally described. It's a, it is the, an attempt to get as many people in our community to read the same book. Our committee picks books that are uh, generally popular, non-controversial, uh, and en encourages all age levels, really, even in schools. Uh, admittedly, this program is, is participated in mostly by our seniors, but we, in we intend to make it cross, cross age levels. Uh, it, it's not just a exposure to literature, the art component of it, but it's just as much a community effort. We want to bring the community together. If you can sit in these meetings at the library where there's 40 people there that are there all talking about the same thing, all sharing ex their own experiences, how they relate to that book, it really is rewarding and it brings the community together. That's as much as what we're trying to do with that as it is to expose people to good literature. Um, this past year we had Patrick McMillan as we, we each year we try to pick a book bring a presenter, generally the author. This year our book, the author has, was deceased. Uh, so we brought Patrick McMillan, who 
knew the author very well. Uh, and he came here to spoke, speak on the book. But he also has a unique background. Patrick uh, is the uh, director of the South Carolina Botanical Gardens. Uh, he's the host of an Emmy award-winning uh, show on PBS, Excursions with Pat McMillan. And he happens to be a graduate of Allegheny High School. And uh, I think has moved back to Allegheny and is now a resident of Allegheny County. Uh, his, uh, his program, I was sitting there listening to it, while he talked about the book, he also talked about, and the book deals with, with the environs of our, of our area, he talked about the flora and the plants of, of Allegheny County, and it was really interesting, but it really impressed me sitting there that I really wasn't focused on what the Arts Council was able to do. That we have some, we brought someone here that parents, because there wasn't too many children in the audience, but even if there were children, they could look at this gentleman making this great presentation and say, you know, I sit in the same desk he sat in. He achieved this, I can achieve this. My son and daughter can achieve that. And that had nothing to do with the art. I mean, that was just something that happened. And I was really proud that we were able to make that happen. Another thing we did this year was partnered with the Allegheny Community Theater to try to revitalize that. They've having some difficulties in fundraising and, and getting going. So we, we, we funded their presentation of a 12 angry um, persons, I think, uh, that was put on at the courthouse. And it was really, to me, amazing to see people you know at the coffee shop, people you know walking down the street on stage doing a terrific performance. And again, a sense of community. Uh, people like Donnie McCall, Brant Burgess, that you know in other, you know, you don't know them as actors, but to see them on stage doing a terrific job is really a good sense of community. I was happy to be able to do that for the theater. Uh, also related to theater experiences, there's a uh, program that uh, takes elementary children and exposes them to theater in an after-school program and in a summer program at Sparta Plays. We, helped, we funded their presentation of Sleepy Trudy, uh, which is back in May, I believe it was. And to see these you know, elementary kids, young kids, perhaps be on the stage for the first time uh, was really rewarding. And I think that gives them, inspires them to be able to, that feedback they get in the Sparta Auditorium, beautiful auditorium, big location, for those children to get up there and do that in front of an audience uh, is wonderful. For the first time this year, the Arts Council partnered with the schools, which we should be doing all along, and trying to bring cultural opportunities to the schools that they can't otherwise afford to do their own. This year, we brought STEM the Musical, which was a presentation that the, some of the school uh, principals identified. Uh, and it was a wonderful presentation. We had all three elementary schools. Auditorium was packed. And uh, they did a presentation that combined emphasis on the importance of, of science education, particularly the uh, encouraging girls to go into science. It encouraged, uh, it, it, it showed examples of, of how to deal with the bullying that occurs in schools, but it did it in a theoretical, theore the theoretical uh, 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 format where there was dance, there was, you know, acting, uh, there was music. And I tell you, that whole auditorium, those kids were moving up and down, they were dancing in the seats, they were moving the arms, they were singing, you know, Larry, you were there. Uh, it, was, it was wonderful. Uh, we hope to do more of that type of stuff with the schools. We actually have a grant application in with uh, North Carolina uh, Arts Council that may give us as much as $10,000 to do these kind of programs. So we're looking forward to that next year. A new thing that we did this year was the, uh, a music series during the winter, uh, And the Beat Goes On, that took place at Money Creek. And um, what we tried to do here was bring one thing. We wanted to provide something for the town, for the county, to do in the winter when things slow down. So the first Sunday every month, we had uh, artists, singers, songwriters that don't normally perform in, in, in Sparta. And we had them on a, on a bill, and we had um, uh, people come in. This is the first time I've really realized that we're making a, um, uh, success in drawing people into the town. We had people 
that only came to Sparta to see that show. They were following the artist. They saw the, on the artist's tour page they were going to be in Sparta. They came to Sparta that Sunday night, have dinner at Muddy Creek, watch a show in a very intimate environment, room no much bigger than this. Uh, they were inter able to interact with the artist before and after the show. We had one, we had Kyle Petty, who was one of the performers. I never knew Kyle Petty was a singer, but he was a pretty good one. Uh, and we had people bringing in fenders and tires for him to sign before the show. It was, again, a great community experience in addition to the musical enjoyment. Uh, we partnered with the Allegheny Wellness Center for the second year with their uh, presentation of what they refer to as Fiesta Day, which is really a multicultural event trying to particularly emphasize our Hispanic culture that exists in our county. And we had probably 350 people the Sunday afternoon, uh, families, food, music, dance, art on the walls that from, our, from our schools. The schools partnered, had their students directly for this event do paintings and things that highlighted the multiculturals, not just the Hispanic. We had, we had Asian cultures. We had others. And um, I don't think I've ever been anywhere in our county where we've had the Hispanic community celebrating their culture with the rest of the county in a, just a tremendous family fun day. And uh, I'm proud to do that as well. Our last event for the year, and hopefully you've heard about it, we've done a lot of effort into publicizing it, happens actually this weekend. Uh, it's the Backwoods Beat Music Festival. Well, uh, this is a busy slide because we've got a lot going on. Uh, Backwoods Music Festival is actually the fifth year of, our, of, of, our, of, the, of the festival, and it was intended originally to celebrate songwriting, and it was, we done it. We performed it in uh, 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 in honor of T.J. Worthington, who was a local resident that passed away a few years ago, who was a big supporter of music. Um, and we intended it to be to bring entertainers to Sparta that would not come otherwise, but they were not that not or just good perform singers, but they were primarily known for songwriting. And this year we have two outstanding uh, performers, one for Friday night, one Saturday night. Matricia Berg on Friday night, Mary Gaucher on Saturday night. Uh, Matricia is well known as uh, a writer of country music. Uh, any of the strong female anthems that you heard, Trisha Yearwood sing, Martina McBride sing, most of them are written by Matricia Berg. But I'm particularly pleased with us being able to get Mary Gaucher. Uh, I don't know if you saw in last week's Allegheny News the article that uh, Bob Bamberg put together, uh, wrote. It's, uh, it's an excellent article that's, that hits exactly what we're trying to do in terms of celebrating songwriters. Mary has an interesting life, and in this article, in, which revolves around a TED Talk that she presented, she talks about how songwriting healed her. Uh, helped her deal with a lot of personal demons that she was ha uh, dealing with. Uh, she didn't write her first song until she was 35, but she is now a, a Grammy Award winning uh, singer songwriter uh, who is using music songwriting as an avenue to, to help heal people's uh, issues. Uh, her current project is working with veterans. Uh, she works with a veteran group that she pairs up with a veteran and their family and that veteran tells their story, the family tells their story, uh, and she p helps them put it into a song. And it, it really is therapy uh, for the veterans. And she's uh, going to bring that to her, her latest album, uh, Rifles and Rosary Beads, uh, is the result of, of 12 of those experiences where she's taken individuals and their families and helped them deal with their issue through song. And that's what our program is about. But as we were planning this program, we really wanted to do more than what we've done in the years past. Uh, we wanted to do something that would be a festival, a true festival for the town, for the county. Uh, we had thought about what else we could do. We have the art show that we used to do, Art of Maine. It got postponed from last July, which, uh, and we've decided to package that with this program. So on Saturday at the Sparta 
Presbyterian Church lawn, we will have the art show. We have 10, 12 of our local artists. We have 10 uh, artists from out of town coming. Should be great tents. Hope for good weather. Uh, so we have the art show. We have 15 other singer-songwriters performing at Laconia, performing at Muddy Creek during the day. All of that is free. Uh, we have uh, children's activities in the alleyway at, next to the chamber. We'll have art-related children's activities. Uh, all of that is free. Uh, and, uh, and we have the two concerts. In well, in addition to that, we have songwriters' workshops uh, where each of the songwriter at Jam House will ha put on a workshop for 20 people. Those, those workshops are sold out. The Saturday night concert is sold out. Uh, so we're getting a great interest in, in the events. But there's a lot of other activities that you can enjoy just walking down the street. Uh, hopefully we'll bring people into town. Put, we've worked with the businesses, made them aware that we're doing this. Uh, some businesses are having special programs this week to take advantage of it. So we're really hoping that we increase the economic benefit uh, that will come from the festival. Uh, the impact of our programming, we think we've had over 2,700 attendees at our events. Now, obviously, some of those are multiple, same person comes to multiple events, but still, we've had events that have drawn in 2,700 people, approximately, uh, and I, I think that's a pretty good showing for our, for our county. We have a program of over close to $40,000 being spent. Uh, our program is intentionally structured to be diverse with both music art, with all music, art, theater, all, all aspects of, 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 of art. We're purposely intending to be diverse, intense, in, both in terms of, of the artists that are doing this activity as well as doing things that will bring a diverse audience uh, to, the, to the program. Um, kind of in wrapping things up, I, you know, over the last uh, two years, uh, our board, whom I list on the last slide, all volunteers have worked very hard to revitalize the Arts Council and to expand its mission. Previously, the Arts Council was nearly invisible, uh, and it was totally government funded. And it used those funds to provide to other organizations to, who would put on their, their design programs. What we've done is through our own fundraising activities, program fees, we've reduced our public funding from that 100% to around 40%. We have reduced the amounts are the same, but we reduced the percentage that those, com those funds coming in is to the total budget to about 40%. We've reduced the amount that the county is providing to us from something like 50% to 20%. So we ex expanded our resources. Uh, that allows us to expand what we're doing. We now are not subgranting to other organizations to put on activities. We are designing the programs. We partner with a few people that we worked with in the past, but we try to control the quality of, of the programming. That's what we're, that's what we're here to do. Um, so with, with that funding, to be honest with you, it's not a question of if, if we can get the, we need the $6,000 from the county to survive. We've gotten to a point where we can survive without it. The question is what can we do? If we have it, what can we do versus what we can't do? And hopefully you've seen some of this activity that you will agree that it's beneficial. I know our pro I've, I've been to almost every one of our programs. I can see it in the faces of the people. I can see in the faces of those seniors when they're in the meeting at the Blue Ridge Reed, they're enjoying themselves. I can see it in the faces of those children when they saw that program. Uh, they were enjoying themselves. Uh, the tourist visitors to our town at, at our music series, when they told me they can't believe that Sparta has this program in this environment to be able to see this. Never been to Sparta before, I'm coming back. So I've, I've gotten the feedback. I think we're doing successful. Hopefully you will agree with that. Come out this weekend and if you haven't seen some of the things we're doing, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, so I think 
your support is very important to us, not to survive, but to allow it. We need sustaining income that we can rely on year to year that allow us to be there year to year. We want to be a partner with the chamber. We want to be a partner with the schools. We want to be there. We want to help the county. I think if you look at any vibrant city, you'll see that they have good health care. They have good schools. They have good business environment. They have good recreation. And they have strong arts councils. We want to be that, but we need your help and certainly would appreciate your continued support. Thank you, and I'm glad to ask any questions that you might have. M Mike, uh, you mentioned early in one of those slides the potential for applying for a grant. I think maybe you already have, but you haven't gotten a response, or you will be. In the past, I know we have uh, helped be, there, that's a, there's a matching grant that, that Arts Council in the past have applied for and received and needed local money in order for that to, to, to come to fruition. Is that the case with this one, or is this a, a different grant? Uh, this is of? a different grant. Uh, to speak to what you're referring to is that really is the, uh, the seed or the beginning of the Arts Council, and that North Carolina Arts Council has what is known as a grassroots grant program, that it will provide funds to every county to if there's an appropriate Arts Council operating in that county. We are the designated art, Arts Council for Allegheny County, and we receive six or eight thousand dollars of funding from the county, and that's based on population and such. Uh, to be clear, that the county, in the past, practically each year, the county, the, the, the six thousand that we have asked for you is really tied to that eight thousand dollars. NC Arts expects us to match that money. It doesn't have to come from the county but they expect us to match that money with our own fundraising. In the past, that has Somewhere. come from the county and the town. So just any local right. matching. Right. Okay. The grant that I referred to that we hope to get from the schools uh, is purely uh, it, it, an arts council has to ask for it or it be the party to receive it, but there's not a requirement of any local matching. They can, it, we can spend that money completely for the program that we're trying to, to produce for the schools. Thanks. Any other questions? We have an uh, organization that came to us, Genealogical Society, and basically said, we understand the tight straits the county's in. We would like to defer funding for this year. Now, I feel young whenever I get around those guys because I'm a volunteer and I go to the uh, museum. If they can do it, why can't you? You said that you needed to continue. We're we're kind of hurting here. That's your decision, sir. Well, it I'm, is, I'm, I'm it not going. I'm not. Decision. I'm not going to tell you I don't want my six thousand uh, dollars. I think I, I've made my presentation as to what we do, and I think it's <laughs> worthwhile. I think uh, if we don't get the county funding, we'll be doing less of it. Uh, but whether or not we're worthy versus uh, your other needs is obviously your decision. Good answer. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Next on the list, Mr. Chad Beasley and company. Oh, a lot of there you go. <laughs> Glad to see everybody. Good to see y'all this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. I don't have a presentation. Are you are you gonna pull our budget up, Mike? Or okay. Well, the, you just. It, our spreadsheet here. They have a copy in there. Okay, book here. that's fine. I just uh, I'll, I'll touch on a. I'll just highlight a few things, and then for I'll go a little bit over our our planning allotment that we got from the state. I don't think you guys have a copy of that. You just got our local expenditures and our capital request, and then I'll answer some questions on that. But. Um, you know, the Allegheny County Board of Education uh, truly appreciates the interest that the Allegheny County Board of Commissioners has shown for the education of our children in our county. Uh, a good close working relationship between the two boards has the potential to yield great benefits for both the students and citizens of Allegheny County. We've constructed this budget with a great deal of thought and with consideration of the financial issues currently facing our county. 
This year, uh, we will continue to get our small school supplement funding, but as benefits continue to increase, the funds cover fewer and fewer salaries uh, within our system. For the 2019-20, the planning allotments that we have so far from the state, uh, they continue to remain the same. Uh, there is a drop, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but some of that funding we don't get until school starts and budget's been passed by the General Assembly. Additionally, the outlook for the funding we received from the federal government, it's still unclear as well, so we don't know those funds either. We believe that uh, for a community to thrive and prosper, prosper, the local school system must be uh, at its very best. Allegheny County Schools is doing great things for our children. Our dropout rate uh, continues to be one of the lowest in the region, actually one of the lowest in the state. Uh, the graduation, graduation rate has continued to increase and is above the state average again. Uh, our CTE graduation, graduation rate is, I think, over 98% this year, so uh, it's, it's one of the highest around, too. We're doing a great job of producing graduates who are career and college ready. Our ability to uh, continue to deliver a high-quality education to Allegheny's most precious resource, its youth, has been severely compromised, though, by the drastic reductions funding in the past 8 to 10 years. Even though we began to see some increase in funding in 2015-16, uh, these reductions have hampered our abilities to provide the most basic <clears throat> of instructional personal and instructional supplies for the children. Uh, we need your help to be able to continue to properly equip our students for their future. We continue to dramatically improve the education that Allegheny County students receive. We are currently working uh, with Schneider Electric to implement an energy savings program that should yield thousands of dollars and reduce utility bills over the next few years. Hope we can be a part of that uh, talks uh, when we jointly meet in August, if we can get that meeting set up. An investment in our children is an investment in Allegheny County and Allegheny County's future. We need your support, your help in a very difficult time for children of this county. We stand ready to continue our partnership with Allegheny County Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Allegheny County. And uh, me, my board, our staff here, would just like to thank you for your support and your commitment to our children. So. Uh, I, I know you don't have this in front of you. I'll just kind of touch on a few things for our planning allotments that we get from the state, our 2019-2020 planning allotment. Uh, the figures I give you, we actually have a decrease of $1.7 million right now from the state. But, as I said, some of that funding we won't get until spring of 2020 and possibly during the year. So, um, but anyway... Uh, just, to, just to throw a few figures at you, our classroom teachers, right now we have a decrease of $1.5 million in funding for that. <clears throat> our central office administration has a decrease of over $2,000. Our non-instructional support personnel has a decrease of almost $5,000. Our school building administration has a decrease of $121,000. Our instructional support funding is down $16,000. Our driver education training, uh, we have no funding for that right now, which is a $20,000 decrease. Um, our CTE months of employment, uh, we're down one month right now from last year. Uh, our CTE program support is down around $300. Our uh, disadvantaged student supplement funding is down almost $2,000. Uh, teacher assistance is down $115,000. Our children with special needs is down $56,000. Our academic and intellectually gifted is down a little over $200. Our limited English proficiency has been decreased by almost $5,000. Uh, our transportation, one thing that has an increase, we've been increased by $72,000. And we have... Um, an increase in at-risk student services of about $12,500. So as you can see, um, it's, it, it, that doesn't look good, but that's what we have to plan on right now is, is, a, is a budget that we don't have and we're $1.7 million less money than we had last year. We know that we'll get some funding. We don't know what it'll be, uh, but we, we feel like, I've talked with Cindy, our finance director, and she feels like Hopefully, we'll be back about even where we were from last year. Um, but things, as things increase, benefits increase, 
just like our small county supplement, it, it doesn't pay as much and it doesn't cover as many salaries as it used to years ago. Um, so, but uh, with that being said, that's why we come to you and that's why we need your help. And, and we appreciate the funding that you guys have supported us with the last four years since I've been here. Uh, we, we couldn't do it without you. Uh, and, and like I said, I don't want to like, sound like it's doom and gloom, but we, we it's always a challenge. It's always every a challenge. Year, yes, it is a point. challenge, you know, and uh, we've got a lot of things, a lot of good things going on in Allegheny County schools right now, and we'd like to continue that. And, and as far as our budget request, yeah, we've requested more than, than we received from you guys last year, but uh, there again, we feel like if, if we can get fairly close to the funding that we had last year, we, we'll, we'll make things happen. So, but... Uh, with that being said, questions about capital projects or local expenditures? I would say a big thank you to you and all your staff for, for educating and taking care of our kids. With taking all the resources you have, and maybe it's not ideal, but you use it and utilize it, I think, to, to maximize the education that that's going into this community and, and then these children and uh, got a great staff and a lot of a lot of good teachers that care for these kids and and I know a lot of cases these these kids this is the brightest part of their day and, and some some homes are are challenged out there we know True. that so uh, thanks question from what percentage wise the school system gets what out of our tax revenue 30 some percent or uh, it's about between 15 and 20 percent. 15 to 20? Well, just the local appropriation. If you, I guess if you count the loan payments and count the capital, yeah, probably is about 30 percent, yeah. When you do your circle and you divide it out or your tax record, it shows education, mm -hmm. I think, is about the largest. Yeah, just to, if you count law enforcement as a unit sheriff jail everything yeah. they're just about equal with the school uh, but if you count those separately then the school system is the largest by far yeah and of course you got to keep in mind you know it's not only education system it's by far the largest employer in the county as well that's something I think people don't think about that all which as in most counties the school system is the largest employer by far as well so we want to make sure that it is uh, you know they have adequate resources to proceed I know we don't technically pay the teacher salaries directly from the county budget. They come indirectly from our taxes we pay to the state. So it's amazing how the state cuts funding to everything and brags about a $2 billion surplus this year. Isn't it? That's correct. That's easy to do. You know? <laughs> it's easy to do, if though. We, when if, you we, <laughs> if we zeroed out the school, we'd have a $2.5 million <laughs> surplus right. here locally, you know? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so it is a challenge. I mean, it's, it's, and, and, and I don't foresee that we'll have a budget we, we hope to have a, we hope to have a budget from the state by November. We'd like hopefully. But so I, I just remember back years ago that education wasn't supported as strongly as it is now by the commissioners. But I think in the last six, seven, eight years, you've seen an uptick in the the money that we that the commissioners have provided for the school system. Yes, sir, and I and I appreciate that, and I have. I've seen an uptick every year, and so it's it's very appreciated, and and uh, we do a great job with the funds that we get, educating our kids, just like Mark said, and 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 we do. We have a we have a like I said, we're we're at, we're at a good place in our school system right now, and if we can continue the same amount that we have, we feel like we'll we'll be in good shape with it. So. The, my budget that was presented to you is basically the same amount as last year there. We're not requiring them to reimburse the school resource officer next year, so netted out is the same amount. And of course, right now we have that adding the additional school resource officers in there as well. That's not being, you know, no reimbursement required from, from the school yeah. system there. So I did, and I got another email. I know you've been asking me about it. I did get another email, so hopefully we'll, hopefully, I don't know if we'll hear anything about this month, but they've got to pass the budget first. Yeah, I know. Before so. they can fund that particular yeah. sit, but but I do feel like those grants will be available. Yeah, well, so there's going to be gonna... a bigger pool of money. It looks yes. like no matter what yes. happens, it's just we don't know. Correct. What's going to go for security, like cameras and things, versus right. SROs? We don't know all that yet, but.
But we're in their capital funding. Though, we're already we're already planning for for those cameras. We we're, we've got to get cameras in Piney Creek and, and Glade, and we've got to expand the, the camera system down at Sparta as well. So, and we're doing another upgrade at the high school too. It's uh, you know when you have old 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 buildings, it it it, it takes a little bit to to, to upgrade them. So. This is what you do to the children. I think they compete well in every area. They do. They do. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate that. Outstanding. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody? Other questions, comments? All right. Thank you all. I appreciate it. budget we want to address that next yes um, we talked about a an increase uh, in the general fund transfer to the transportation going from let me find the right line here Going from about twenty-five thousand to about fifty-five thousand. What line is that, Karen? Right here. Sorry, but that's actually we're going to need a little bit more than that. We're going to need about uh, about eighty thousand, eighty-one thousand to to make everything balance for next year. So uh, we've had. You know, Tiffany's got some information there for you, but we've had substantial, you know, like everything else, substantial grant reductions, and of course we had vehicle challenges this year as well that ate up a lot of our uh, fund balance, unfortunately. So, and one of the things that I would like to point out is several years ago when the Ed Van funding was cut by the federal and state that. The Board of Commissioners at that time made a decision to continue the ED program because of the impact that it has for our citizens. So um, on the information that Tiffany's provided, that's the first page of the information showing you the cost of the ED program. We've talked about ad nauseum over the last couple of months. We still have to met all the Medicaid issues out there that we're kind of like the school system right now. That's all that hasn't been settled yet, and yet we have to make our budget for this year, and we we don't know for sure what that's going to look like on the other side. But every Medicaid transformation meeting we go to, the non-emergency transportation, which is what Allegheny in Motion provides. That's where all the questions are. That's where all the unsettled issues are. So hopefully this is a bit of a worst case scenario budget, but um, you know, it's getting more expensive. The state gives us a little bit less, a little bit less every year and expects, you know, uh, our population uh, is continuing to age. We have more folks that need the ed program, more folks that need the uh, Medicaid transportation. So. It's only going to continue to uh, expand. Should we consider visiting our fees in any way? Have you have you give consideration to that, or have any recommendations to? I mean, I know we don't want to. You know, we what what it needs to be affordable, but at the same time, is is there any room there that? Uh, Ma'am. The public is watching and they cannot hear you from there. Um, I met with the CTAB earlier this month and we did discuss meeting at our, well, at our next meeting to see about change in fees. 
we're going to wait until we see what we do get from the state and federal funds, and we won't know that till probably the end of July, 1st of August. The federal government has that October 1 to September 30 budget year that uh, messes with our July 1st to June 30 budget year, unfortunately. So. I think you've already factored in some potential increases for the new Medicare program? Yeah, we're trying to be very conservative on that, um, you know, not expanding our, we expect ridership to increase, not really expanding the revenue side there. Um, but, you know, we're just spitballing really at this point, so we don't know what it's going to look like on the other side. <clears throat> How big was that spitball? <laughs> you know ten thousand dollars something like that so even with that additional twenty six thousand dollars coming out of the um, general fund we're still in good shape from where we started. I'm projecting about $140,000 surplus at this point. Um, you know, I think we're still in, we're still in good shape. We, we've made some cuts. We're, we're up a little from where we started, but we made made a lot of cuts along the way as well. So I feel I feel comfortable with with where we are right now. What does that represent as far as tax increase? 142. Five. Yeah, eight eight tenths, nine tenths of a cent. Oh, I'm, I'm, you mean the, this is the, with the 4.95 cent tax increase that I had originally recommended, yes. 142,000 is about eight tenths of a cent, maybe something like that. We're going to raise property taxes 4.9 cents, 95 cents, and that would give us a projected surplus at this time. The surplus of hopefully of roughly a penny. Which now. will be blown out of the water if they expand Medicaid. Well, possibly, yeah, I mean, assume, and you know what happens there, that there would be some adjustment in, in funding from the state if that happens, but, uh, you know. State of North Carolina, I've learned in my three years here, State of North Carolina is really good about saying something's going to happen in five years, and then four years and nine months later, there's we don't know anything more about it than we did at the beginning, you know. Medicaid say, transformation say, the same way. I would say four years, 364 <laughs> days. Or going ahead and starting something before they have it all figured out. That's what's frustrating. Yeah. Y'all don't run into that at school yeah, every day. Yeah. So, you know, we're using a substantial chunk of reserve this year. We've had uh, mm -hmm. a lot of things happen, and so we, we need to at least start the year with a surplus going in. For next year hopefully we'll do better you know I could add another thirty thousand dollars to our projected sales tax revenue but we'll just leave it where it is and uh, leave that as a little cushion there so he told me a long time ago don't spend future income he had somewhere all the meetings we've had a line item in here for a uh, an allotment or a contingency of fifty thousand. Yes. How, how is that going to be handled? I know it's 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 used for the uh, initially any any of the uh, amendments or budget amendments that would come. Would we still be seeing a budget amendment? You'll still see and, a budget and, amendment still come but, before but you. But it would come from this line instead of the fund balance fund balance yes uh, uh, until it's if it's all consumed then it would go correct then we would be going from fund balance okay all right anything else but well, we do have um and from the presentation that Mike made from the Arts Council that we passed over until we heard from him. 
that we do need to reach a consensus on. It's 24. Test is for 6,000. And I would ask where the board wants to go with that. The uh, Mike left that at zero. Below the board. It's all the everything submitted properly from the request. Yes. Okay. Good with it. I, I am as well. I think they have uh, got some good leadership and and really are making a, a lot of impact in our community and, and and with our schools too. So I think. Uh, I think it ties in what we're trying to do, get more people in town, get more people spending money. Uh, it, it, and that's what it's targeted at, as well as the education of our children. I could support it if we went back to the uh, genealogical society and added their money in. They have just as such large an impact. I mean, we can certainly revisit any any line anybody wants to uh, before we make a final vote. But here we would just well, let's consider this one, and then if we want to go back and visit there, they made it. They made a request, and then basically rescinded the ask. Or yeah, so but they rescinded their request based on conversation between the county manager that they were going to be zeroed out with the others. They were trying to be good citizens. Now, I have no, no problem voting for the 6,000, but if we're going to give to one, let's, let's go back and, uh, and, and revisit the uh, arts, or not the art council, but the uh, genealogical society. You've got a right to bring it up. Yeah. yeah, but and I, but I don't think it's well, you've got four trying votes. to be you've good citizens. You've got four citizens. votes right now. The, the discussion is over with. Doesn't mean that, you know, just because they're asking doesn't mean that they're not good citizens. I think they're good well, citizens. I, ne I never insinuated that. Asking for something that they're promoting and doing here. So at this, yeah, we'll go ahead, I think, if. Uh, that's what the rehearsal. Yeah, that's the ask. So we have at least three, which, four. Okay, so we'll change that mic to, to six. And then uh, we do, we want to go back and visit the conversation for the, I think they're, how they listed, Historical Society? Historical Society. That's on the next page. Historical society. What's uh, what I, would, I would say go with the uh, requested. Well, they didn't. They rescinded that, but I would say go with the twenty-five hundred. They do a tremendous amount uh, for this community. Running the website for the historical society, they take in uh, documents. They're storing them. <coughs> <laughs> they are doing the uh, the interviews now. They're doing a lot. They've also taken on that uh, the mortgage for that new location that they're at. Their fundraising, frankly, is uh, not keeping up. <clears throat> Mainly because I guess the average age of the membership is probably in their 80s, makes me feel young every time I go to a meeting. Thank God Cindy Atwood's there. John, they're doing the uh, Allegheny Memories, is that what you're talking yes. about, the interviews? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think they're doing a lot, but I, I struggle with with giving it if they're not asking. I mean, I, I think if 
I think if they really needed it, they would not have taken their ask. You know, they wouldn't have uh, taken it back. I, uh, I, I would know, remember. I, I would remind I you, that Mr. DeBose said that he could get by without six thousand dollars, but they could do more if we gave them the six thousand dollars. Right. And this, this historical society is in the same situation. They may be able to get by, and they have told us in a letter that they could get by, but they could do more if they received $2,500. And whenever we started looking at an $18.3 million budget, $2,500 is not that large a sum. I agree. But there again, I mean, they're the ones that have, you know, it, I just... You know, I think if they needed it, I, don't, I wasn't involved in that conversation, but if they needed it and they wouldn't have have uh, sent the letter, and I think everybody got a copy of the letter, so, yeah. I just, I think in the past that, that we've supported the Historical Society, They're, they keep records of this county that nobody else keeps. They do the history of the county. They have a great museum, but with their board of directors this year, they've seen fit not to ask for the 2500 I would have to go along with their board of directors if, if they, I, I would love to give them the 2500 but I'm not going to force somebody to take money that says they don't really need it this year, but now next year, they want to be considered next year. Uh, you know, they're not asking for this not to be a reoccurring expense on down the road, but with their organization saying they don't need it this year, I think they're being responsible to the citizens of the county, you know, by making that statement. Uh, Last year they asked for 2500 and my initial re recommendation was zero, and I informed yeah. them they came and presented to the board, and uh, the board at the time decided to fulfill the request at 2500 This year, same situation. I informed them they were not in the initial cut, and they, they said they've chosen not to move forward. They don't need it. So, yeah, I agree. I'm 100% for the historical society. I think they're, they're a key element, and they're a good draw <coughs> in the county for the people. But if, if they say they don't need it, I would like more organizations to step up to the plate with that attitude, uh, I, it surprised me when I heard that. But, but I do know that they uh, they had received some good donations this past year, and that probably has a lot to do with this uh, with this request. Probably. But, but I w I want them to be back next year if they need the money. So, so where are? Larry, what's your you favor supporting it? Or? I'm, I'm mixed on it, but, you know, and I love to see groups raise their own money. If they say they don't need it, I, unless they were forced into saying that, I'm okay with not getting them anything. Yeah. I wrestle with it, too, but in all fairness to all organizations, I would be more happy if they walked in here and requested $2,500 in the, in the budget, you know, so... Uh, invite them back next year. Uh, really gives them some brownie points for next year. So. They do do a great service for the mm -hmm. county. Uh, <laughs> doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're we're unanimous in in supporting them and appreciate what they do, um, and honoring their their zeroed request or or initial request and then rescinded it is is okay i'm sure they'll be back i think the issue is settled after a while you get tired of swimming upstream so let's move on all right anything else did we get we have any more funds that we needed to visit can't uh, take care of the transportation fund. 
Took care of it being out of balance, yes. Yeah. We have uh, fees, mm -hmm. copies of our our fees that we. Okay, yeah, we'll get them during the break here. Okay. Speaking of break, it would be a good time for <laughs> That's one. That's exactly what I was thinking. This time we'll take a five minute recess. We're going to get a fee schedule. Yeah, the. Uh,
several goodies here that we just got. Um, let's look at this job description. I guess we 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 need to do we need to take action on this? Um, yeah, or and just kind of. What you we're really looking at. The, we really need to look at. The, there's a pay. There's yes. a pay adjustment that goes along with it that we need to get into the budget. Is what That's we're correct. really after. Right. Which uh, which one of these uh, class? What's its class? It, um. Or is it listed? Currently. Yes, it's on a, a sixty-two. One from a 61 to a 62. So the and the impact to the general fund is a total of um, a little over eleven $1 hundred dollars, one thousand one hundred and six dollars. And then the impact to the transfer facility fund is an impact of $278 because his position split a little bit to cover a little bit out there as well. Yeah, for a grand total of 1383 yes. Yes. Not yet because he's still working on gathering you know, all of his pricing and getting accounts set up before he can do the ordering instead of right now where all of us do the ordering and things like that, so we're still working on that type of information right now. It would be easy to show a savings of $1,500. I think so as well, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The exact numbers? 1,886. <coughs> Less than seventeen hundred. Are the government we'll to, after all? We'll there. have to look at it next year. <laughs> A lot of paper, pens, pencils. Where that? We just got him in the general fund and also the transfer facility side. Is see us find a way to track the savings so we can consider that next year. We approve the job description now. Can we approve? That's fine. Or should we bring no. it to a one of our next meeting? I think when when you pass the budget and you pass the pay plan, that job title is in here, so it would be in conjunction. You're approving this when you approve the pay plan. Typically, the pay plan is approved when you approve the budget itself. But as far as the job description, the job description we've got to do that. Itself, I think yeah. we should probably go ahead and we'll, we'll pass it this way and have all the financial side of it. But I think the 
documented job description should be. Well, I think I would prefer to do it at a regular meeting, our next regular meeting, as far as the description itself. Okay, so you um, on the July, the first meeting for you all in July? July okay. Put on there and take official action. Okay. It's okay. I mean, it's the only choice. I don't know that that <laughs> is the only choice. I, but, and it's part of the budget, kind of, but kind of it's not. So, I, whatever y'all want to do. If you Technically, approving the increase in compensation for it is part of the budget. Approving the creation of the position is technically a separate item, you know. And as long as you've got the money appropriated in the budget, then you can, with the job description, can wait till July 8th. It couldn't wait till October 8th, but it could wait till July 8th. Let's just do that. Regular meeting. the eighth, right? That's, I think that's what we had agreed on. Yeah. And that will be <coughs> our only that's July our only meeting regular meeting unless in July. Something yeah. comes up that we need another one for. All right. Um, I think Karen has some I also would like to make items. another um, we had talked about that an EMS had received a donation for the stop the bleed. We have put it in the July 1 budget, but if you'll notice on Monday's agenda, it was a budget amendment because we have already received that money. So um, we just need to go in and take out the revenue and the expense side. And that's something that you know Mike and I can do you know, after the fact because it's a wash. It's not going to affect the fund balance numbers. 20, I just wanted to mention yeah, that. $2,400 or something. 2500 even. You were thinking it was going to be realized next year. Correct. And it's already been realized. Yes. And so both sides will come out. Yes. Linda went ahead and ordered the items as well. Uh, so. Uh, objection. Go ahead and do that since it needs to be done. What else you have? I have... Um, Back to the transportation fund. I don't know if um, in the requested on the expenditure side, I'm, I'm letting Mike get there so we can see it on the screen. Okay, so in the requested under salary, it's 67, 610, which counts the year three for everybody, but then in it it didn't the number didn't get increased I guess from the year we're doing year four I said year three excuse me okay. year four so that needs to be adjusted okay. and then um, the FICA needs to go back to the 13872 okay. yes so that might make you know we have to make sure that that fund's still in balance with that 81,000 because now it may just be just a smidge more yeah, with that 82,000 or something maybe. right And then I know at the last meeting um, we didn't have any numbers in for the 47 fund in the spreadsheet. Um, now I have provided that information to Mike and those numbers are now there. So it will be on the budget ordinance. And also on the library, the 64 fund, the library memorial book fund, um, the same conversation on that one and as well as the 71 school capital. So um, Mike and I have worked on all of those, so now all of those numbers are, are there for to have on the budget ordinance as well. And they were in the ordinance version that I sent you all the other day, so they were in there. It was just a draft, but yeah.
But we had talked about, you know, where the tax office had to go ahead and purchase the vehicle. So that's what I was just saying right there. That doesn't reflect taking the vehicle back out. The vehicle was twenty four thousand. We'll lower that twenty four thousand. That's appropriate. Correct. Only other items that I have is about the Governor's Crime Commission grant that's in the Sheriff's Office budget, the 10-5-10. That grant goes until September the 30th. It is actually an October 1 through September 30th grant. Those numbers I will need to update after we get through writing checks because that's literally what April and Jennifer are doing right now because I know no we're spending some of those monies today. So it will be rollover items. So 510 will be adjusted a little bit when you all see the numbers when it comes back to you for final approval and that'll be the why because we just got to get the rollover monies in there for next year our next yeah definitely get everything that's everything i have thank you uh, do you have anything yet i had a uh, couple one thing on a couple things on the solid waste fee schedule when we get there, but we have I think uh, three items, or well, more than that, a couple stapled together. We have uh, any changes on these uh, these part-time pays? The only thing um, on the part-time pay is we've added the new um, part-time position for soil and water, and I'm waiting on confirmation from them on the title and things like that. That's why it's just kind of like highlighted right there. And then um, the only other thing, you know, we we tie this into the per hour rate to this. So that would be the only other changes that's on the part time. Questions on any of those? not we need to take action and approve that it's presented then correct amendment says <clears throat> time allows Would entertain a petition to part time. Second. Petition in a second. Move the part time pay plan as presented. All in favor, make it known by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no. I have a. Thank you. Have a. Fund balance policy uh, for discussion, and that was what I was referring to a while ago. Uh, well, maybe not. This is something that was in your all's board packets at a regular meeting, um, probably the first meeting in June, somewhere around in there. Um, this was just something that has been um, highly recommended that entities have a fund balance policy. And this was a policy that I had created looking at other policies and, and trying to fit it to what I thought would be um, a good recommendation place to start. Looking at a 25%. The Local Government Commission recommends us to be within our population group, and our population group is actually between 30 and 40 percent and I know right now our fund balance is on the lower side so I thought to start out with try to get it to 25 percent and then from there we can increase it 
to make it to, with the LGC guidelines or recommendations. They're not guidelines, excuse me. And where are we right this year? Where are we? We're going to, I mean, we ended June of June 30th of 18. We ended like 21, 22%. We're going to be 18 or 19% June 30th of this year, something like that. So. 18 or 19 something like that yeah. so you're looking for this to be for this next budget the budget we're working on now we're not going to get all the way to 25 if, if the budget is 100 percent accurate we'll, we won't get all the way to 25 next year it'll take a couple of years to get there um, to probably, yeah, probably two, two years. years yeah but this would be the goal to get to work towards mm -hmm. getting there does this does the, our fund balance in any way have to do with borrowing money or bond rating or you know by yes. the state yes it does the, and it also um, impacts our cash flow the lower we are the less desirable we are to the state yes correct and the la and the more challenged it is with cash flow as well Well, we looked at the bank making a loan for for a family. You know, they they have any reserves. You know, they have. A Our collateral is is not great at eighteen or nineteen, but at twenty five, we have a good rating. We have a better rating. They yeah. would read. They prefer it would be between thirty and forty percent. So thirty gives us a good credit rating. Yes. Twenty five percent is is three months of of your expenses. Mm -hmm. So. That's a good target, you know. So you're looking at 30% in two years or 25% in two years? I, I think getting to 25% in two years would be a, a healthy goal. I think we have ran between 20 and 24% since I've been a commissioner. And I'm just going from men. What's kind of interesting to me is is the uh, the bottom the, the the lowest they will allow us to go is down to like eight percent. At eight percent. One mark, yeah, eight eight point three three well, percent. Well, that just that but just blows at that me time, away. well, if they if we get down to eight percent, they will come in and, and they will take over for us. Well, and they, they could. Will. Uh, they could choose to, and we'll be getting letters. Well, they went in to another county and did that. Yeah. So I, you know, I don't want to and go you'll, anywhere You'll have another there. county manager because I'll be dead of a heart attack before we get it down to 8%. So. And a finance officer as well. Just throw <laughs> that out there, too. Yeah. I, I think it's a, it's, it's a step in, in a more desirable direction, and we'll try to keep moving in that direction. One thing that um, the county manager and I have spoke about too is starting with the July 1 year, anytime somebody comes up with needing a budget amendment, they need to be able to come to us with where's the money coming from instead of just showing up and saying, hey, I need this budget amendment. You know, they're going to have to have skin in the game as well on, on the other side of the equation. They exhausted all of their resources. Correct. Within before they go somewhere else. Correct. Is this something we need to? Is this a? This is. To vote I on? think this is a proposal right now. I I would like to bring it back to a regular meeting. Yeah, I, to, I agree. Yeah, if that's okay with y'all. But right. eventually we'll have to vote on it. Yeah. 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 So, look over it. Any feedback? Let them know, and we'll discuss it again at a maybe in July. All right, and then we have a uh, fees schedules before us that we need to approve. First one is Allegheny in motion fees and no changes there at this time. And we may hear a recommendation when you all meet back again. So, <clears throat> but at this time, um, do we need to, should we do these separate? We do them all at one time. All at one time okay. is fine. Okay. All right. Um, 
Next one is uh, fire inspection fee schedules. Question. Uh, on the ABC permits, is that just for beer? Or is there one for beer, one for wine, and one for liquor? Now this is the required fire inspection for your ABC permit. That's the same inspection. Uh, if a, if a, a restaurant wants to sell beer or wants to sell mixed drinks, that's a different permit. That, that's not what we're talking about here. It's this is just the fire inspection that's required for your ABC permit application is what that is. When they apply for it. Yeah. Okay. Daniel has to inspect them, and the, that's the same inspection no matter what type of ABC permit you're asking for. But I don't want to forget that question when we get over to another place. Okay. That's it. Any other questions on those fees? Okay. And of course, the big thing at the bottom, we, we've designated churches, schools, foster homes, and nonprofit organizations exempt from fire inspection fees. So if you want to amend that list in any way, we can, but that, that's been our policy for some time. Not from inspections, just from the fee. From the fee, yes. yes. Yeah, the schools mandated each school gets two a year, uh, and I generally put them in our board packet. I, I find them interesting, so. Uh, but yeah, that, but we don't charge the school anything for them. <clears throat> Next is the inspection department permit fees. Are all those the same? The what is a moving permit? Moving a house. Yeah, that's. Not something that happens all that often, but it does have to be inspected on, on both ends. It has to be inspected when it's disconnected, and it has to be inspected when it's reconnected to its new location. So. Is that a mobile home as well as the station? Good question. I don't know the answer. I, I think it is. I would say so. If a mobile home has been attached and a, a deemed real estate, I would imagine it would be the same for both. Yeah. Now, a mobile home coming from the dealer's lot is a different permit, but... Once it's been set up and established, I would assume it's the same permit. The uh, third one down, this park RV, the models, is, is an example of that at Old Bow? Is that what we're talking about? Or where they're selling lots to park your RVs on? Yes, I think so. And, and that's just a two hundred dollar fee. Or it's a, a accessory building. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think building. it's for a garage to park your RV in. Is what it is. That's for a, a garage to park your RV in. So that's if they build a small building. Mm -hmm. Is there a, an inspection fee or anything to park the mobile home and hook up to the electricity and the so no, when the electrical and water connections were established, they required an inspection. But if you move your RV in for a week, move out, Bill moves his RV in for a week, there's no inspection for that, no. Okay. Same at the campground, we, uh, at, the, at the fairgrounds, you know. The electrical connections were inspected when they were installed, and the, but then there's not one each time. Now, aren't those, those lots are sold as a permanent residents for the RVs. That's my understanding, yeah. At Old Bow, you're talking about the yeah. park at Old Bow, yeah. They've, they've just sold the first two or three lots, which was good for us. We get to tax them all individually now, so. 40, 50 some thousand per lot, but there's no inspection for that, to park your RV there permanently. No, again, just for the, any electrical or, or water connection that was done, which I think they're kind of doing, though, they're selling the lot with the water and electrical connection already there. Questions? Hey. Parks and Recreation. Any questions on those? I've got one. There you go. I thought at one point we talked about the swimming pool inspect the entry fee going up to <coughs> two, three dollars or something. And then at the same time, 
I'm not sure this is correct, but I read it someplace on Saturday. The hours are from 12 to 3 o'clock. It's just on on a Saturday. Yeah, we just we have ten or twelve kids on a typical Saturday. Hardly anybody shows up. Uh, they were open longer hours, and we just with a couple people there, and that's just the only real what that's the only thing you'd call a peak time on Saturday. There just there's not much swimming pool activity on Saturday. So we'll have on a Thursday, Friday we'll have forty to sixty, and then Saturday there'll be ten or twelve at most. And the, the lifeguards are hired on a, a full-time, 40 hours a week? We have some lifeguards. Yeah, we're short right now. We're, that's one thing that we can attract somebody that might decide to go lifeguard at High Meadows or Old Bow is we can guarantee a 40 hours right now. Um, do, do they lifeguard for 40 hours or do they have other functions? Uh, it's not quite. No, they're... they're you know, helping with maintenance and cleanup and things like that as well. Yeah, it's not quite 40 hours of lifeguarding. <clears throat> well, I just remembered at one time we talked about raising that daily fee. We have, um, and again, we can. I don't know that we're quite ready to do that. I'd, I'd like to get all of our upgrades completely done before we raise the fee on that. So maybe we'll look at that for next summer. So. When will the upgrades be done? Well, the SALT system will be fully implemented in the next week or so. The large sliding board, we have to uh, get an engineer to stamp our design, and that's going to be a couple of weeks away probably. So we're not quite that. We didn't know about that up front, unfortunately, so we're going to have to, uh, that's going to delay that a little bit. Plus, it's a pretty big construction project, so we may, the uh, plan is to close the pool one Saturday and, and try to get that installed in a Saturday, but it won't be, won't be this Saturday or next Saturday, but hopefully before the pool year is over. A small slide, is it, is it going now? No, it, it's, it requires the same engineer cert, but it's something that will take about 30 minutes to install. It's not uh, the, the large one. you got to dig footers, and, I mean, it's got to be, uh, you know, support its weight and meet wind standards and all that. So it's a little bit bigger construction project. So. We didn't know all this beforehand? Didn't know we needed the engineer certification, though. So. Get all that done on one Saturday, <coughs> hopefully. Yeah. yeah, we'll have uh, Jim, a couple of our part-time guys, and maybe one or two maintenance guys come into work that day, and we can, they can knock it out in a day. Yeah. Sure need to get that thing going. Yeah. Anything yeah, we're behind else? on that. Anything else on on those fees? Solid waste. I had a citizen question the on rental property being able to collect it. Uh, <clears throat> I had some concerns about how that fee was going to be obtained. I haven't talked to him more about seeing if it can't be added to the uh, security deposit, but apparently he had a history of people leaving. That's a fee that's up to the property owner to collect, <clears throat> you know, whether it's rented, vacant, whatever, you, you pay that. If it's a household, you pay that fee. Uh, it's no different than rent, you know, of somebody skipping out on the rent. It's really not any different there. Um, property owner's responsible for the solid waste fee and the property taxes and everything else on the property. So we have a, a few citizens that own multiple rental properties that complain about this every single year. Um, but, I mean, that if you want to be a landlord, that's part of the responsibility of being a landlord. You know. My interpretation of what he was saying, Mike, was more about the fact that uh, a renter could incur additional solid waste fees that he was not aware of until they had moved out and gone. I see. Marshall? Charge it to my property or something like that? Yeah. 
you know, any way we can help in that situation? Generally, I mean, individuals are it's pay as you go if you have yeah. fees. Or we're not, you don't generally have accounts. Uh, I don't know what I don't know particular mm -hmm. situation you're talking about. I'd have to think. I can't right now visualize the scenario over there. There probably is one. I just can't yeah, visualize what that is right now. If you got a renter that brings in a couch or tires, then there, there's a fee for that. Do they have to pay for that on site? Yeah. Okay. That's pay as you go. Right. Yeah. And anybody that has the commercial um, a business and they rent their business, they are notified once a quarter how much is owed on that property. So they're, I mean, I know it's once a quarter, so it still could be, you know, a couple months behind, but still. It's sent out every quarter. Mm -hmm. The renter on a residential, they pay as they go if it's above the standard. Is that right? I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand the question. I apologize. If, if I rent property, I can take my garbage there and not be charged unless it exceeds whatever. I right, your garbage. normal normal household garbage would be. <clears throat> There's no fee. There'd be no fee for the, that. Yes. The, what the landlord pays for. Mm -hmm. okay. If there's something extra, then they pay for it on site. Yes. That's true whether a renter or an owner. That's correct. Okay. All right. We are we are changing that. We're we're <clears throat> dropping the some of the bulk item fees for now. That's proposed on the on the solid waste fee schedule here, uh, not to charge for mattresses and couches and things like that anymore. Uh, still having bulk item charges for animal mortalities because those are uh, kind of a special handling. A couple of things on the solid waste fee schedule. Um, the brush and evergreen disposal, $60 per ton. Josh and I propose have a minimum $20 charge on that item, and the same on the animal mortalities, a minimum $20 charge. And then the tires, the tractor semi-truck tires, going to have to go to $7. We just got the new pricing for next year from our tire vendor, they're going up from $72 to $90 a ton. So, did some research. Apparently the average tractor or semi-truck tire weighs between 100 and 110 pounds. So we'll use 100 to make the math easy. That would be 20 of them per ton. Uh, 20 times five is $100. If we're having to pay 90 to dispose it, we can't get it there for 10, so we're gonna have to raise that fee. So we're gonna go to $7 per tire on that instead of the five that's on your sheet there. We just got that in late last week. So, so we need to make that change? Yeah. Today. It was $7 per tractor or semi-truck tire. Uh, the $20 minimum on number seven and number nine, I mean, I, I wanted to kind of get the board's thoughts on that. $7. What are they talking about in animals? What about people that bring deer carcasses or that are in their trash bag? You don't even know what they're throwing. Yeah, if it's bagged in a garbage bag, yeah, that would not, it would just would be, it's primarily large deer and, and cattle, primarily. Anything you can legally throw away in a garbage bag would be just considered, you know, household if garbage. If it can be put in a bag that's... And you can legally throw it away, that, you know, right? like yeah. things like pesticides, certain chemicals, you can't legally throw them away. Yeah. And there will be new signs at the uh, trash dump that'll have all these prices. Yeah, we're going to get a lot more signs out there, English and Spanish, of uh, policies and traffic flow and all that kind of thing, yeah. Is $98 going to break us even or will it give us a little cushion? $98 right now is going to, will give us a surplus for the year. The big unknown is still recycling. 
Recycling can go away at any moment. If recycling goes away July 3rd, $98 will not be enough for the year. I'm assuming that if recycling does go away, it, you know, it's not going to be for the whole year. So I've, there's some cushion built in for that. Um, but if recycling stays for the whole year, that will have a surplus in the, which is good because we're, we've used all the fund balance pretty much in that fund. So. Over the last one or two years, we've talked about doing some major renovation or construction at the transfer station. Where are we on that? Well, we had, we've talked a few times. My original vision was basically having a separate drop-off location for just for cars with residential garbage. There'd be two large trailers, one for your trash, one for all of your commingled recycling. That was the vision. But with the uncertainty in recycling, we're not going to invest any money in that right now until recycling shakes out and we, we see where that is. Um, it's just, you know, it's still very tenuous right now. About a year or so ago, somebody hit the lower part of where the trailers go in to be loaded. Is that stable enough? Yeah, we had, we had an engineer. We. We did some repair work and we had an engineer, uh, Harold, help me his last name, Pruitt. Pruitt. Harold Pruitt looked at it and we're okay. Yeah, said that it was okay. Yeah. Until somebody else hits. Yeah, it's still, you know, it's a tight corner. It, it will get hit again at some point. Yeah. So we're doing away with the $10 couch fee. Is that what you said? That's the biggest complaint I hear out in the county is the those extra charges, uh, I think, do away with them. People will utilize that more. Well, we're going to get a lot of couches in July. Yeah. No question about no that. Doubt. No <laughs> doubt. And a lot of mattresses. <laughs> but you won't see them over the road. By so we, we've we've kind of built a little bit in for that as well. That's you know, good. we're going to get a lot of couches and, and mattresses in July. Yeah. Allegheny Cares will transfer. <laughs> Ninety-eight dollars. Where does that stand compared to surrounding counties? Ash is 135. Correction. They went up. Okay. 150. 150. In their okay. But their budget yeah. for Monday. But of course, Ash also has convenience sites. Not you don't have to bring everything to the main location. So, you know, if we had convenience sites, I mean, you're getting a little more for your money. So it's not an apples to apples comparison. But we're still match it very well. Wilkes is a pay as you go each time to the transfer station. My other house in Johnson County, Tennessee is that way. It's pay as you go. If I drop off, uh, I'm usually paying $3. If I drop off trash, depending on how many bags it is. Um, so it, it, there's different ways to do it. <clears throat> well, if our, if our sticker thing works, we should maybe receive less trash. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Right. Or so. compensated for what extra right. comes in. Yeah. It's, so, so the changes here are, are, are the seven dollars for the tires, and then you you want to propose a twenty dollar minimum for seven and nine. Yeah. Well, the 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 tire charge we we had been giving everybody the first four tires at no charge. If you could you know if you could bring in four tires at a time with no charge, we that that's so we're that's going away as well. So every tire you bring in, there's a charge going forward. So. We're the tire throwing us away county that I've ever seen on the face of the earth. I think every every citizen of Allegheny County throws away about 15 tires a year. It seems like so. So is Josh? <laughs> you had a conversation with him on all these rates, yeah, and y'all are on the same worked page. Worked out the math. And he yeah, thinks that it's yeah. appropriate mm -hmm. and not going to hurt us and going to cover us well enough everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Again, assuming. Recycling doesn't go away for 10 or 11 months out of the year, then we're, we're in good shape on the transfer station fees. I know it, $75 to $98 is a big fee, a big increase. That's almost a 25% increase, but you know, that's just the state of affairs right now. How many years do we have left on our hauling contract? Two more. Two more. Uh, again, that, that's another issue. Landfill space is more precious. Supply and demand. If you own a landfill and have available space, you can 
charge about what you want to charge right now because a lot of landfills don't have any available space. So that that our, when that renews, it, our rate will go up substantially. You'll start looking at the renewal next year. Mm -hmm. yeah. About this time next year, yeah. So are we good with the twenty dollar minimums? One more question. Okay. Mm -hmm. The animal mortality is the twenty dollar minimum. Like I assume that twenty dollars gets into the dogs and cats and that type of thing. Is that? Uh, but that technically, it, you know. I would not intend for dogs and cats to be included in that because I think most are small enough you'd probably just put them in a garbage bag anyway. You know, if you had a really, really large dog, you know, this is intended to be livestock and, and deer. Uh, we could specify that on there. Uh, we, we, we can specify that on there. Well, that's a very fair, you know, a thousand pound cow costs you $30. You can't. Hire a track over, go out here, a backhoe, and bury one for that. Well, you got to get it to us, you know. So there, there's. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's but, uh, got pickups. Yeah. We we don't get a ton of cows. We get a handful a year, you know. But we get we do get deer carcasses, or sometimes the whole deer. Sometimes they've you know taken some of the meat and the hide and things like that. It's more of a skeleton, but we, we do get substantial number of deer carcasses. What What does DOT do with the deers that they pick up? Did they bring them to our transfer station? I don't know. That's a good question. I've been there when they brought them by. I think they do. I think they, I know that, I think they brought in some carcasses before, but I'm not 100% positive on that. We don't charge DOT, do we, if they bring them? I don't think so, but I, again, I, I can't say that with 100% certainty, but I don't think we do. They would just fix the, uh, DOT would just fix up around the uh, animal shelter. They would, uh, we'd call it even with all the deer carcasses they want to bring us, right? They'd fix that water runoff there, so. Any other questions? Recycling is, to me is a big issue. I don't know how we fix it. I wish there was a way to if we had a source to sell recycling to, I wish there was a way to penalize or reward people for recycling. It's all, it's all supply and demand right now. You know, we've gotten better as a society at recycling. Uh, so there's more, more recycled stuff than there used to be. And there's less parties buying the recycled stuff on the other end. So. Actually, it's China. Whenever they put the tariffs on China, China was taking all the recycling and they had families that would go through and separate the various types of plastic then they would reutilize. And they've stubbed up and cut back on that. They're not accepting uh, recycling, so we have no place to take it. Their, their economy is slowing down as well after many, many years of running at an unsustainable rate. You know, China, I'm not a scientist, but they don't have the right trees and all to make good quality cardboard. So they basically have to buy all the cardboard they use in China from somewhere else. A lot of it comes from the U.S., recycled cardboard. Uh, as the economy slows down, they're manufacturing less stuff, shipping out less stuff. They don't need as much cardboard these days. So they're still buying cardboard just in greatly reduced quantities than they were. So just as an example. And glass, there's, there's really no... There's no home for recycled glass right now. Every recycling company in North Carolina will tell you just throw it in the trash. If you bring it to us, we're just going to throw it in the trash and not and not pay anything for it. So there's no there's no home for glass right now. So at all. Good with it. With the change to seven dollars. And the twenty minimum. And the twenty minimum. <clears throat> Uh, we can charge what we want. They're going to pay us what they yeah, will. Yeah, <laughs> but we've actually had a very good year in, in EMS revenue. We forecast 410000 and we're about 430 right now, something like that. So we've had a good year. Uh, Linda's done a good job collecting, and uh, we've gotten better at that. Um, 
I think that's one positive change with the kind of coming into the Baptist family. We're sort of a in-law or a third cousin to, to Baptist now, but with the problem with the fees a lot of times comes in as we move people from hospital to hospital, what, how the insurance company classifies the trips and things like that, that factors into how we get paid. That, that's really helped uh, with, with our fee collection. So we're, our fees there are where we need them to be. Again, like John said, we all see our medical claims and doctor charges $400 and uh, insurance company pays them $62.12 or whatever. <laughs> and you said our collection, what, what is our collection rate? Are we at 90 percent, 80? Collection rate, I don't know, as billed versus collected. I just know that we, we're over what we projected in total revenue in EMS this year. Because I think what three or four years when we first came on the board, there was a very, there was a lot of money out there that hadn't been collected. Yeah, we still write off a ton, you know, but uh, it, it's gotten a lot better, so. All right. Any other questions? I, I just, what I was asking a while ago about ABC permits, does the county have a ABC permit fee? Do we have a business license fee? Uh, yeah. We don't. We, we can't charge an ABC permit fee. That's only regulated by the state. There is no county business license, no. But there is an ABC yearly permit fee, who does that go to? That goes to the state ABC board, right? It comes to the sheriff's office and Sandra brings it over to the finance office. Yeah. And so there's one fee for beer, an additional fee for wine, and then additional fee for liquor. I think it's those three. And then you have one for uh, brewery they have to have a license but all that doesn't come to us directly and that's all set by the state we're not yeah we get a small portion of the abc permit fee comes to us locally yeah but we're, we're not that's not our fee to charge and or collect so let's say if there's a on the building permit Fee, there's also an ABC inspection fee there. You know, Travis has to inspect if in the Daniel has to inspect and then uh, before you can get your ABC permit fee. That's if you're going to start a business and mm -hmm. start selling whichever beverage. Mm -hmm. Or if you're adding on anything like that, you know, so. All right, any other questions on any of those? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve as amended, and I think the only ones that we did amend was the on the solid waste page, $20 minimums to item 7 and 9, and the $7 fee for the large tires. So I move. Second. Motion and a second <clears throat> to approve the fee schedule as amended. All in favor, make it known by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. 5 -0. Actually, we have 11 mixed beverage restaurants in the county right now. So, for 11,000 people, so one for every thousand people, so that's good. So, Ash County is two and a half times our size. They only have 12. So, uh, got great dining and beverage options here in the county. And I could name a hundred old primitive Baptist preachers that are rolling over in their grave right now. Well, Tauga County has 130, so you can keep that in mind. <laughs> they have 130. What else we got? You good? You make adjustments once you get your crime commission monies mm -hmm. arranged. Mike, you got anything? Okay. Um, so we will plan at this point to meet back on the 24th at 4 o'clock for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes unless something new develops. I think we've got everything else covered. Um, we'll be voting on our ordinance. We've already got the fee schedules to pay. And then there'll be a, uh, if you've seen that email, there's a uh, project ordinance that we'll need to approve for the loan for the. Uh, 
senior center and nine hundred thousand loan. Mm -hmm. Place. Anything else? Will we have new updated yeah. sheets? Yeah, we'll get those out to you there tomorrow. Yeah. I guess the only the only other thing I'm hesitant to bring it up, but uh, uh, if you guys want to throw me a two or three percent raise, I won't turn it we, down. So we plan to have a discussion there. Um, I have been doing some homework, got okay. some information, and I want to talk individually with the members. And yeah, hadn't forgot you there, Will. <laughs> I'll get up with you. Okay. Drew, you think of anything we've overlooked? All right. Anything else? Anybody? What do you want to do with these budget books? Leave them on here uh, so that we can recycle. That's totally up to you. If you would like to keep them for your documentation, you're more than welcome to. But if you would like to leave them here, yes, we do recycle them and use them again. You can donate it to the Historical Society. So. Uh, I don't think it will come. <laughs> you want to discuss school resource officers? Yes. Uh, school resource officers. Uh -huh. Larry's. Yeah. To me, that one doesn't feel good. Um, I understand the empathy on having them to go from what we thought was one to which was actually two to four, pretty big jump. I don't know that we looked at it from an economic standpoint to make sure that we were minimizing the cost of the county to Adam, i.e., does the school resource officer need a vehicle? Um, a vehicle sitting in front of the school can be a deterrent, but it's also an expense that I don't know that we need to bear to start with. If there is a situation where they got to transport somebody, that's when the sheriff and the deputy should get involved. To me, the school resource officer is one that sits there, uh, builds rapport with the kids, but is a deterrent for people trying to come into the school. I don't know that we've minimized what the cost could get down to. I think we just put in dollar figures based on those salaries and mm -hmm. all the equipment to go with it. To me, that just doesn't feel good. But I, I would be the last one to say we're not going to put them in the school. But <clears throat> I think we need to be a little more prudent. I think that we've got to do a security assessment. And unfortunately, if we do a security assessment, if we are going to take it seriously, we're going to end up spending a whole lot more money. Right now, we're just putting one body in a school he may be armed but we are not looking at the locks points of access things of this nature now we've got two sources that we could do a security assessment with uh, George Peoples did it in the Army and also with the uh, South Carolina Highway Patrol doing security assessments for courthouses he's offered his services at no charge the NRA is providing that training it's a weak school it would be in Washington, D.C. at their headquarters. They do not charge for that. It would be per diem cost. Once we've got someone to go in, look at the various schools, and, and advise us on what is needed based on a threat, and we haven't even defined a threat, then, uh, then I would feel much more comfortable that we're meeting the needs. To me, just saying we're going to put a resource, school resource officer in there without looking at the threat, the needs to properly secure, all we're doing is just doing a feel good. Here we are, public. We're we're putting a school resource officer in there, making it feel good, and it's not. It wouldn't be able to to really influence the situation that might come up. Not only that, uh, the school hasn't briefed us on problems that they've had requiring a school resource officer. Uh, hypotheticals are hypotheticals. Realism is. I mean, the real deal is a real deal. The sheriff just put it in his budget. He hasn't justified it. Just put it in there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with Larry. I am not comfortable at all. Comment on the threat assessment. Steve Carrier, who's the SRO at the high school, he finished the certification this past year. I think it was through the Sheriff's Association. Um, 
building threat assessment. He's actually been working on this building so he's actually this done week. He, he's presenting Daniel and me his findings on this building today, and he's working on DSS now. Uh, and I know he made some recommendations to the school system, and they did they did some things, but we don't have specific details. And I don't know that we would want to have those public, <coughs> you know, like. Hey, you can break into Piney Creek School oh. anytime you want to through this window. You know, and I don't know that we want to publish. We want to, but it, so it's difficult. I think if you had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with uh, the sheriff or with Steve, I'm sure that he would inform you of, of some of the things that they've done. But it's got to be careful with with doing that publicly. You know, I believe we could go into closed session on that. Probably, and, and he could. Why do we want to take up his time and any individual time of the commissioners going one-on-one -on -one to the sheriff? I mean, if this is such a threat, he should be in here saying, I need to talk to you in private, get us in there, and talk. I'll, I'll confirm with Don and make sure that would qualify for a closed session, and we can certainly do that. The uh, um, August the 5th, the uh, sheriff and Nick and the school resource officers are going to be on our agenda on August the 5th at our meeting. Uh, the, one of the purposes was to introduce the new school resource officers if there were new school resource officers. I know uh, the one that served the elementary school this year has left the Sheriff's Department, so there'll be at least one new one. And then Steve was going to give us a five or ten minute report from the last school year, uh, you know, very general in, in generalities, you know. Uh, but we certainly could have them stick around for a closed session. If, if it qualifies for such, I'll confirm that with Donna. They weren't available July 8th because they were going to be in class. So. As far as the cost goes, I, I, have, I did reach out. Mike and I have communicated on that. I wanted a, a breakdown. We had discussed it roughly, but the cost for the SROs, first year cost, for everything is a hun just over $100,000. That does include a vehicle per yeah, each. Um, and if you, so if you took the vehicle out, that would be 60 K each, about 60,000 each. Um, I, you know, of course I know they don't have it and don't know when they'll get it, but with expecting some drug money, could they in fact use that for vehicles? If they when they realize it, and maybe as yeah, Larry that's, says, that's right. maybe we could, you know, have create the get the officers, get them trained, and get them ready if if that's what the board chooses. I mean, there's there I know there's there's already consensus for it as it stands, but it's not final until we. And I just think they need to be more prudent in how they put that money out there and what we use it. You know. Uh, when you look at the town, they've got police cars sitting all over the place, one down at the uh, uh, chiropractor's office. I don't know that we need security down there. Park one of those in front of the school. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think we need to dig deeper into to minimizing that cost. Of course, the idea of the new vehicles was the SRO officers would not be the ones using them. Correct. The, they would get the hand-me-downs, but we don't have to buy vehicles at all if officers. we don't add yeah, the yeah. officers. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So we, we, we were still buying two. We try to buy two cars every year for the sheriff's department to rotate in new vehicles, but we would we're adding four this year, two extra for the additional. Well, officers. actually, if we're buying two, there's the two cars for the SROs, for the extra SROs. Already have two in the budget. We got two in the budget. There's going to be two vehicles that are available unless the engines blow or the transmissions go out. A conversation regarding that and see if see what the feedback could be, and maybe we'll revisit. Maybe take an extra ten minutes at the at the final. Of course, we if so, and if we make an adjustment. If we may have to go back and retype the ordinance, but that would be pretty easily done and, and approved, I think. 
fairly quickly. It would make me feel better, yes. Thank you. Anything else? Now's the time. Or when we meet back on the 24th. One more thing for Monday is we'll need to do a reimbursement resolution for this year's capital loan as well. Because we, uh, the jail, the laundry equipment at the jail, is we're going to need to buy that like right away. So we want to go ahead and do the reimbursement resolution on that. So there'll be budget resolution, the uh, project ordinance for the $900,000 project, and then a reimbursement resolution for this coming year's capital loan. So there'll be three uh, ordinances slash resolutions. So on the 900,000 that we're looking to uh, to improve things, when will we get started putting out bids or when do we have a priority list what you're going to do first, the senior center, BDC, whatever? Well, the BDC contracts have been awarded. So the uh, HVAC is done. The roof will be starting. Uh, Soon as we close our loan with DBT next week, they're going to start on the roof with weather, you know, pending weather. Um, and then we've Josh has we've been compiling some quotes on the senior center construction already. Uh, there, we've got three or four in already, so we're we're going to start on that pretty quickly. Have, have we signed all the documents with the senior center about the with the wellness center? No, not not yet, but. We should have that. Hopefully, that'll be on the July 8th uh, board agenda, the, the contract with the Wellness Center. So there's nothing to hold us up getting started? No, no. And the quotes are coming in. You know, we had a $250,000 budget for the Senior Center. What we've gotten so far looks like we're going to be right on that or under, so it looks good so far. So um, got a metal building option and a wood frame building option, and they, they both, both options look really good. So. Recess or adjourned? We need to adjourn. And then Mondays will be a, okay. You're always welcome to recess if you think there's some reason you may want to get back together again as a board between now and Monday. Um, and then if you do that, you can, you could adjourn the meeting then first thing, Monday, you know, at the beginning of the meeting Monday, or technically before the meeting starts on Monday, if you want to do that. That leaves it open if you do want to get back together avoids advertising and things like that but Monday is scheduled for four o'clock is that still okay with everybody okay. all right we adjourned until Monday at 359 <laughs> thank you <all. coughs>